promoting a healthy environment. It's the air we breathe. Clean, safe water. Responsible management of our natural resources. We protect and restore for a sustainable future. Environment matters. I hate to see them in the river. I like them a lot better up here on the bank, getting ready to go to, to be disposed of. Hundreds and hundreds of tires creating an eyesore and a nuisance at a popular local canoeing spot are on the way out, thanks to a group of volunteers. Plus... The whole point of this research project is really to find out, one, whether, whether there's uh, any, anything that needs to be addressed, any environmental issues. In other words, identify problems if there are any, and once you've done that, to find out how to resolve those problems. A massive five-year research project on horizontal gas drilling and fracking in the Marcellus Shale Formation is now underway at West Virginia University. We'll have the latest on the project from Morgantown. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Environment Matters. I'm Greg Adolfson. And I'm Kelly Gillenwater. Governor Earl Ray Tomlin says West Virginia will take steps to submit a plan to comply with the U.S. EPA's Clean Power Plan. In a statement released October 27th, Tomlin says, While I believe there are significant questions regarding the legality of the Clean Power Plan, these new rules have been put into place by the federal regulatory agency. Until a final legal decision has been made, we cannot afford to ignore them. The DEP has already started work on a feasibility study to determine what options are available for West Virginia to meet the requirements of the new standard. The DEP has 180 days from the effective date of the rule, which was published in the Federal Register earlier this month, to submit the study to the state legislature. The Clean Power Plan, also known as Rule 111D of the Clean Air Act, looks to cut carbon pollution from the power generation sector by 32% from 2005 levels by 2030. In order to comply with this rule, states have the option of developing state implementation plans, adopting model state plans developed by the EPA, or have a federal implementation plan imposed on them by EPA. The feasibility study, which is being done in conjunction with researchers at Marshall University, was mandated by the state legislature and requires a comprehensive analysis of the potential effects of the EPA Clean Power Plan on the state, its people, and its economy. The next step would be to develop a plan, submit it to the state legislature, and if approved by the legislature, submit the plan to the EPA. States must submit a final plan or an initial plan with an extension request by next September. Final completed plans must be submitted by 2018. Governor Tomlin says by submitting an initial proposal, the state will have two additional years and the flexibility needed to complete a final plan. A copy of the governor's complete statement is available on his website. Anyone with data that could be useful in the development of the feasibility study or the state implementation plan or would like to provide comments about the Clean Power Plan in general, can share their thoughts with the DEP. Comments can be mailed to the DEP at dep.comments at wv.gov. With Clean Power Plan in the subject line by December 31st of this year. You can also mail them to Clean Power Plan Study Comments, West Virginia DEP, 601 57th Street Southeast, Charleston, West Virginia 25304. You can find out more information by visiting our website, dep.wv.gov. It's a part of the Big Coal River, known by local paddlers and kayakers as the Valley of the Tires. But a group of volunteers is working to change all that. The DEP's Jake Glantz joins us now with the details. Well, Greg Kelly, local residents say it's been a problem for years, the dumping of unwanted tires into the Coal River near Alum Creek turning a picturesque stretch of water into an underwater obstacle course for canoers and boaters. Oh, there's a lot of this It's a chilly, wet, and dirty job. Over three days earlier this month, volunteers removed more than 1,100, that's right, 1,100 tires from just under two miles of river. The effort was organized by the Coal River Group, a local watershed organization, in conjunction with the DEP's REAP program and Office of the Environmental Advocate, 
as well as several participants from AmeriCorps. The best part, getting the tires out, I think. It's pretty cool when you can actually lift it out and get them on the boats to unload them. It's a good feeling. And the nice cool water. <laughs> getting the tires into the river is pretty easy. Cleanup organizers believe that most were illegally dumped from a nearby bridge or just rolled into the river somewhere upstream. Getting them out is a little more of a challenge. While some can be found sitting on the bottom just below the surface, many are buried several inches deep in thick river mud. This section here has been a real problem section uh, because they there's so many tires there that you have to do what we're doing today. You have to have a bunch of boats, you have to keep running them up and down and back and forth. And so what we've been doing here is we've been starting out with the boats upstream in the morning. They come down, they get their first pass off the upper end of the hole, and then they go back in and they get them off the bottom end on this pass. The tires are piled up on shore and then loaded onto trailers and hauled to one of the tire disposal landfills in the state. This is one of the most tire ridden places I've seen in Coal River system. The tires are definitely an eyesore. Um, I hate to see them in the river. I like them a lot better up here on the bank, getting ready to go to, to be disposed of. Cleaning up illegal tire dumps and perhaps more importantly, offering regularly scheduled tire collection events designed to prevent illegal dumping in the first place is a big part of the DEP's REAP program. And it seems to be paying off. Well, that's one of the things that I'm trying to cheer myself up with this today is these don't look like new tires. They look like old tires, so um, maybe we're starting to make an impact on people and fewer and fewer tires are making it to the river. We've got a very small group that does what we do and we can't do this without volunteers. Uh, it's, it's just almost impossible. You see how many warm bodies it takes just to get them out of the river. It keeps getting better and better and better. Where we've done cleanups before, especially with volunteers like the Elk River and each year they get way less tires and we get comments that come back like that section of Elk River that we did that uh, and it's been several years now but they still do it every year and they clean up and they come back and say well the, the Elk River is way cleaner than this and it's just the people that are floating these rivers see these rivers have turned into tourism places and with, with in conjunction with the rail trail that they have down here now you're getting people that come down they ride their bikes they come out and they paddle the river I mean it, it, it's a wonderful resource the DEP's REAP program holds at least one tire collection event in every county in West Virginia every year. Residents can drop off up to 10 unwanted tires free of charge, a much better, certainly more environmentally friendly option than dumping them into the river. For Environment Matters, I'm Jake Glantz. Thanks, Jake. The DEP also has an active program of placing hidden cameras at suspected dump sites to catch illegal dumpers in the act and prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. An update now to a story we first told you about last month. The Bureau for Public Health in West Virginia has lifted the public health advisory for harmful algal blooms on the Ohio River. The algae, which first started showing up in late August in the Wheeling area, spread downstream, eventually affecting more than 600 miles of river. This is video shot in mid-September from the Huntington Riverfront. Blue-green algae typically forms in late summer or early fall and can form thick mats that float to the surface, looking like streaks of spilled green paint. It produces toxins that can be harmful to the environment, animals, and humans. Algal blooms in a large river like the Ohio are unusual, but experts say drier than normal weather in July and August, following a wetter than normal June, may have contributed to this summer's unprecedented bloom. Blue-green algae uses sunlight to make food and in warm slow moving waters that are high in phosphorus and nitrogen it can grow quickly creating blooms that spread across the surface of the water. The extra rain in June may have caused excessive runoff from fertilizer and other sources to create an increased nutrient level. That combined with several weeks of mostly clear sunny weather in July and August could have been a contributing factor. Analysts with Orsanco, the Ohio River Valley Sanitation Commission, continue to look for a definitive cause. Thousands of volunteers took part in this year's annual Adopt a Highway Fall statewide cleanup. And that included groups of volunteers from DEP's Oak Hill office and at the headquarters right here in Charleston. The DEP's Brianna Hickman joins us now with the details. Kelly, Greg, the Adopt-A-Highway program dates back to 1988 and ensures that thousands of miles of roadsides are free of litter, 
including one particular two-mile long stretch of McCorkle Avenue in Kanawha City. Armed with bags and gloves and litter pickers, volunteers headed out in search of roadside trash. But they didn't have to look far. Unfortunately, as people pass by, uh, we're finding a lot of cigarette butts right now where people have thrown them out. Uh, but pop bottles, trash from fast food, things of that sort, people seem to just toss it out and not put it in a trash can like they should. The Adopt-A-Highway program is co-sponsored by the DEP and the State Division of Highways and encourages public involvement to help eliminate highway litter. Individuals, families, churches, businesses, schools, civic organizations, government agencies, and communities can register to pick up trash along almost any state-maintained road. Currently, more than 40,000 volunteers from over 1,400 different organizations participate in the program. Ever since I've started working for DEP as an intern, I've always wanted to be able to do more, and this is a great opportunity for me as an employee of DEP to really give back to the community to come out and clean up the litter alongside the highway here. And that sentiment is echoed by other DEP volunteers. And I feel that we need to be involved with our community and let people know that we do keep our highway clean. Every year, Adopt-A-Highway volunteers remove tons and tons of trash from West Virginia roadways, a problem that, unfortunately, doesn't seem to be getting better. They need to be educated. We need to educate our kids so they can go to their parents and say, hey, mom, dad, quit throwing that out the window. You're littering. You're a litter bug. In addition to all that trash, volunteers also manage to recycle about 10,000 pounds of glass, 8,000 pounds of aluminum, and 5,000 pounds of plastic each year. For more information about the program, you can visit our website, dep.wv.gov. For Environment Matters, I'm Brianna Hickman. Thanks, Brianna. Coming up, investigators have determined what caused a CSX train hauling crude oil to jump the tracks, causing a fire and explosions that forced area residents from their homes for days. We'll also take a closer look at a research project that's giving scientists an unprecedented look inside a gas drilling operation from start to finish. Those stories and more when Environment Matters continues.